Yes, yes. Uh, I request Dr. Okay. Harik Charan okay. Behra, sir, uh, the panel convener, to st uh, start uh, the panel discussion. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pedretta Gadegaru. Uh, good evening, friends. Uh, I welcome you to all to the panel titled Continuity and Change in Land Tenure System in South Asia. Uh, this is a part of this panel has been uh, selected by you know, the panelists from the organizers from World Applied Anthropology Congress 2023. This uh, Congress is going to be held from tomorrow onwards and it will continue for four days. Our panel, perhaps it is on part uh, what I came to know from uh, Dr. Fadra Tegaru. And uh, as per this Indian time, it will be somewhere around in midnight. So we thought of, you know, just uh, having a record of these panels. And on third, someone of us would like to join that they can you know, play or the organization can play on behalf of us. So basically I'm uh, happy that uh, the organizer have uh, selected this uh, panel. A very important panel basically on continuity and change in land during the tenure system in South Asia. I'm Haricharan Behra, I'm from Indian Statistical Institute, Kolkata's Greed Branch. And my colleague, Professor Ajit Kumar Behra is from IIT and Danbad. Uh, we are the conveners of this panel, land tenure, uh, continuity and land change in land tenure system in South Asia. At the outset, uh, let me thank uh, the organizer, especially to Dr. Pedro Tagaru, who is also an international organizer from India. And uh, you know he's collaborating with uh, an international uh, university, University of Kansas in Kansas City, in US. Uh, in fact, we have uh, five uh, distinguished panelists speaks uh, in this session, and uh, we have uh, Professor Isuria, uh, Mr. Dhiraj Thakur, uh, Dr. Deepak Kumar, he's from JNU, Mr. Asis Saman Sinha, and uh, also one man members who could not join today due to his health problems. Uh, Mr. Uh, you know, Sanjeev, he could not join, but probably he'll join after a few hours. We have been given two hours. It may, if it goes uh, you know, 15 to 20 minutes more, the, I, I don't think uh, the organizers will have a problems. And uh, let me start with uh, just a few brief about what is land tenure system. You know, land tenure is one of the very complex uh, institutions in India. Uh, there are different perspectives to land tenure systems. Uh, you know, in anthropology, since it is a World Applied Anthropology Congress, uh, it has also a dimension to you know anthropology. That is a very important and vital aspect. That is land tenure. It is associated with the institutions. It is associated with the culture of uh, the you know entire systems that we are talking today. Land tenure is one of the complex land tenures, uh, one of the complex institutions, not only in India, it is also a very complex uh, institutions in, in the entire South Asian regions and also in developing countries. Particularly those who are working on land governance and policy issues, they may be aware of that the land issues, land tenure issues consist of di diverse aspects. It includes land usages, and it, it includes land titling, and uh, you know, ownership issues, it includes possession, it includes inheritance, and there are also several diverse, you know, dimensions of land tenure system. So, you know, in, instead of I take so much time, I would, uh, you know, start uh, with our panelists. Uh, now I would request uh, Mr. Asis Saman Sinha, who has recently, you know, submitted a thesis on this issue, especially land tenure security issues in Jharkhand. So we can start with the young speaker so that, uh, you know, it will be rather motivating to all of us. And uh, we should then proceed towards other speakers. May I invite you, Mr. Asis? Can you present you, your uh, paper? Yeah, thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Uh, very good, uh, good evening, sir. Uh, panel uh, members, sir, uh, Harishan Bera, sir, Ajit Kumar Bera, sir and uh, uh, all the di distinguished faculty here. Thank you for giving me opportunity uh, to uh, do my research. So uh, I'm sharing my uh, PPT. Uh, can you please allow me to share my PPT? Yeah, please, please share it. Okay. 
so you disable it actually organize it can you help us out uh, you know if you have disabled can you enable us please oh oh you, you want to uh, you want to uh, yeah please tell me yeah i want to share to share So I made you co-host. Okay, thank you. So, uh, uh, Dr. Mr. Hari, uh, whom you want to make me co-host? Mr. Mr. Asis will uh, start his presentation. Okay, okay, okay. Asis Amman Sinha. Yeah, done. Thank you, sir. Okay, we can start with Sinha. Now is it visible, sir? Yes. Uh, so, uh, my presentation topic is uh, land tenure security and livelihood activity choices in travel area of China. This is this is again this is also my PhD thesis actually. Uh, so uh, before going to the land tenure security uh, and before uh, discussing, we just want to discuss what is the land tenure and how that it affect the livelihood activities. So the way in which the people uh, composes livelihood are very significant. Uh, where the life, livelihood in the households engages themselves in uh, uh, various uh, livelihood activities based on their uh, existing uh, access existing access of the resources actually so uh, the, the household build a set of uh, assets to involve in any activities actually so uh, these are the human capital financial capital social capitals and uh, human capitals others so uh, this is what uh, and uh, this through this access of resources uh, the households uh, creates a livelihood uh, and decide the livelihood activity choices actually uh, which is nothing but the income generating activity or its choices uh, all together it is called the livelihood strategies of the households so uh, the bevington who came uh, with the idea that the life to generate the livelihood assets, they give three points to be needed for a household, which is actually the diverse set of livelihood assets, which is nothing but the uh, different capitals, which has discussed. And then, uh, then the he advocated about the uh, support of institution to pursue this uh, livelihood asset to convert into uh, activity actually. Then uh, the another thing is to third one is to provide the ability that institutions uh, will provide the ability to transfer uh, this uh, transform this assets into uh, income, dignity, power, and sustainability. Uh, since the institutional arrangement is actually the institutional arrangement saves the process of resources, resource mapping, the institutions has been set up at the utmost in our theoretical framework, where uh, when we talk about the agrarian and rural society, the land is most important component, which works as an important capital or assets, apart from the other uh, livelihood assets. So the, that's why the land governance or the land tenure systems we kept at the uh, first Level. So then uh, the land tenure security is a part of governance, depends on the main factors, which includes the legislative framework that gives the entitlement of the tenure, actually, then characteristics of the land, characteristics of land in terms of economic use or the economic benefits uh, the individual are getting from it. Then availing that. 
to that so then uh, it become very important uh, to have a secure access and that secure access is obtained through the entitlement as per the sense theory of the poverty it says that uh, those who can those who can uh, those who want to generate the uh, livelihood activity have at least uh, clear entitlement what is the entitlement the entitlement is actually the legitimate legitimate access over the resources which gives the right to control to use to transform and in land case to inherit it so these are the overall uh, idea of the entitlement but some approaches uh, on the existing studies talking about no the entitlement is not sufficient to determine that whether we have secure land tenure security or secure land holding or not because the basic function of getting a indulge into any livelihood activity is having a secure uh, access of resources so he says that no that um, many of the studies say that no that entitlement is not enough actually the what is the actual de facto scenario we have in practical that determines the uh, secure level of security and level of and then further level of utility of that resources so as the our subject is concerned to the jharkhand which is actually newly established state in india the can uh, of curve out from the bihar on the basis of their one fourth popul tribal populations and their uh, cultures and uh, their cultures so here the ten here in our framework we have considered the uh mixed actually uh, tenure system which is actually a de facto legal and de facto customary legal customary de facto customary legal is actually the system uh, which is uh, recognized by the legal framework but some extent it is written and sometimes it is not written so uh, this is notional actually so this is this comes under the legal de facto customary and then there is one there after that legal legal uh, de facto uh, there are some existing studies is also saying that no only de jure uh, that is the legal tenure security or having an entitlement or a de facto will not determine the level of security so the when gelder in 19 in 2010 he came with the concept of tri tripartite system he says that uh along with the uh, legal the entitled legal tenure security uh, or de facto tenure security we must have to study the perceived tenure security also the perceived tenure security is nothing but how an individual pursue their position over the land whether it is uh, whether they are feeling secure and secure like that so then uh, that determine the household strategy so after that uh, the study is actually uh, about how this so this is the objective of this we saying that we try to understand a different type of tenure security and their access among the tribal household of the jargon uh, then uh, we try to we examine the tenure factor that determine the tenure security particularly the perceived tenure security then uh, we identify the different type of livelihood assets determine the income generating activities uh, we usually uh, use the uh, word igas that and then what how what is the probability how uh, the tenure perceived tenure security determines the self, the strategy of the households so this is this four uh, objectives uh, the study has this four objectives so uh, here uh, is a brief collection and sampling methods so putting tenancy area uh, that uh, which is covered by uh, tenancy area uh, 15 
districts of the Jharkhand comes under the Chhota Nagpur tenancy area, and another is Santhal Paragna tenancy area, which is actually uh, another tenancy area uh, under the uh, Santhal Paragna tenancy act. Uh, under this six districts come from uh, come under this tenancy area so uh, out of that we have selected i have selected uh, six districts from shotanagpur tenancy area and three districts uh, from spt area so altogether nine districts we have selected and out of that the we have selected nine uh, blocks which have high st household concentration and out of that, uh, again, from each block, we have selected uh, nine uh, villages having a population percentage more than 60, comparatively have a higher number of household. And the basis of selection of the household is the household must have at least marginal land holding and a member of a household engaged in at least one income generating activity. So from each village, I have selected 50 households. And for selection process, I use the 2011 census data. So uh, before going to the analytical, uh, before going to uh, the measuring the uh, factors which influence the perceived tenure security, uh, I have measured the tenure access in terms of governance, where we have classified into two uh, tenure governance, as we said, the legal tenure and customary tenure. So in a legal tenure, uh, the responses has been uh, taken in terms of uh, yes or no, where the, in a legal, uh, there's some uh, question is framed, which, uh, which gives the idea that uh, that individual has a legal title or not, uh, under the uh, different section of the CNT Act and SPT Act as written in a PPT. And then holding number. Holding number is actually given in India, which is actually, which, de uh, which define the position in a map, in a, in a uh, you can say, in a village map actually, uh, uh, which is actually gives you a, a exact position and exact, uh, uh, you, you can say that surroundings and that uh, boundaries of that particular land, then access to the dis dispute redressal mechanism, statutory like legal legal uh, access to the courts and all. In a customary uh, succession or inheritance, actually in a tribal areas, we know that uh, successions or inheritance came through generation and generation. And uh, there are some certain rules, customary rules through which they transfer the land uh, to the inheritant uh, uh, of that higher section, legal higher. Then demarcation, demarcation is also done by the uh, customary methods. And also the access uh, dis dispute redressal is also done uh, on the basis of customary level first. Then they try to go to that uh, legal or statutory framework in general. So then uh, these are the factors which have been covered to uh, understand what are the factors, uh, what are the factors determine the perception of the individual, whether it is secure or unsecure, insecure. So here we mapped uh, secure as a three, then uncertain as a two and insecure as a one. Uh, it is in ordered and that variables are ordered in nature. And uh, I have classified all the factors into four parts. That is legal tenure. Uh, legal tenure means uh, uh, whether you are holding, you have uh, legal, uh, which legal tenure security belongs, you know or not, then hold, do you know holding number, then R and R, uh, do you know the uh, that right of record record whether it is an uh, inherited or uh, it is not the generation gap whether it is not then the second part is like the customary tenure whether land is distributed um, through the customary practices or not uh, whether this is what is, is your perception whether it is justified distribution is justified for you and all 
and then uh, can you lease or mortgage based on the customary norms that physical accessibility it determine uh, that uh, the clear demarcation is there or not the boundary is clear or not then distance for the cultivable land and distance of the non cultivable land from your dwelling or from your house and is and the last one is the dispute whether you have dispute over land or not obviously uh, these are the factors uh, considered uh, for measuring the the perception of the individuals now the uh, the econometric econometric model i use as a ordered probit model to determine the factors the probability to obtain whether it is uh, what are the factors influences the uh, perceptiveness of the securities then another thing is uh, here we have uh, i have classified the entire assets uh, entire livelihood assets into different different capitals that is the natural capital social capital uh, then uh, human capital financial capital uh, etc so and uh, also the uh, i have taken uh, one more factor that perceived tenure security how the perceived tenure security is influencing the uh, livelihood diversification of uh, the households for that uh, we have collected some uh, set of activities uh, that is five set of activities first is agriculture based activities second is uh, your uh, forest based activities daily wages activities then uh, other activities which is uh, uh, other than uh, like professional uh, pt businesses professional activities and all and the last one is income from uh, government uh, support systems uh, so all together we have uh, we distributed each households uh, based on uh this uh, we distribute the household in different clusters uh using the principal component analysis and latent cluster analysis and then we use the multinomial logistic regression model to obtain the probability that what are the factor determine that household to be in that particular cluster uh and then after that uh we try to obtain what is the probability that the household of that particular activity clusters have a secure have a perceived tenure security and how the household behaves based on their perceived tenure security and livelihood activity clusters so here are the results the first uh, we talked about the governance so uh, land right records do you have or not and these are the percentage of a uh, uh, accessibility yes or no and, uh, and these are the districts we have selected we have selected under the spt and cnt act then the factor determining the perceived tenure security we found that the customary tenure factors are more likely uh, to give in the tenure security or insecurity uh, rather than uh the the legal tenure security uh in a legal tenure security we found that uh the generation gap and land distributed a uh, generation gap is playing a important role towards uh determining the perception of security or insecurity and then uh, the next one is the inherited land distribution which is which is again the customary practices then distribution is justified or not whether they have given the lease mortgage a uh, land in inherited land lease or mortgage uh, like that. and obviously the dispute part is giving a significant result and then the non cultivable land which is far from the dwelling is also giving the significant towards the security here the uh, negative sign is showing that we are tending towards the insecurity and the positive sign of the coefficient showing that we are heading towards the uh, uh, secure uh, tenure uh, tenure actually uh, 
Uh, now, uh, based, uh, the access to the income generating activity, here we find that uh, this is actually the, uh, we brought the two activity together uh, for a household. Uh, so it's a two dimensional uh, percentage where each household have, can have many activities. So uh, here we have jotted the two activities at least uh, for one household. So it shows that uh, solely agriculture is contributing around 86% household is engaging at agriculture activity and 74% are fully based on 70 uh, forest activities and all like that. And this is the combination. So, uh, so the most of the households are mainly engaged in agriculture, forest based and daily wages activities. This is the relative income in a cumulative format. Uh, where uh, the, uh, the y-axis is showing the uh, income percentage and uh, x-axis is, is showing the number of households. Then uh, using that latent class cluster, uh, we classify the clusters into four Plus, uh, we classified the activity cluster into four, that LC1, LC2, LC3, LC4, where the LC1 signifies the households whose earning is more, comparatively more, from the forest. LC2 signifies the households whose income is comparatively more from the daily wages. LC3 is uh, signifies the households which has income from other sources and LC4 signifies the household field whose income is uh, more comparatively more from the agriculture. Uh, these are the uh, distribution of number of households, which shows the 74 households are at LC1, 45 households are at LC2, 85 households are in LC3, and 229 households are LC4. The total is 435 households. Dr. Asis, uh, uh, concluded in next uh, three to four minutes. Yes, I, I'll try. Okay. So almost uh, this is the result, which is showing that uh, these are the factors. The highlighted one is actually the significant factors, which is determining the household activities uh, choose of the uh, activity clusters and then uh, uh, this is actually the mean of uh, the mean and the standard deviation of the perceived tenure securities and, and the distribution of the activity clusters, how the households are the mean value of the perceived tenure security and the activity cluster probability. Uh, then uh, the finding of this uh, study is actually is saying that the there's a gap obviously there's a gap between a legal tenure de jure or actual because the last survey was done during the british time itself and now they have started digitizing the survey but it it, it is taking time so uh, uh, then the another findings we, is like the actual de facto and legal de facto is actually uh, not a determining, not influencing the tenure security or passiveness of the tenure security rather than the customer. Customer is actually more inclined towards giving the tenure security, which are all which is determining the tenure security or insecurity. Uh, in terms of perceived tenure security, the inheritance land transfer obviously is as shown in uh, table is giving the uh, tenure security justified land distribution of the land transfer giving the tenure security clear demarcation of land holding is giving the tenure security lease and mortgage of the land is giving the uh, is giving in insecurity because neither in a legal practice or non in a, nor in a customer practice uh, they recognizes the lease and mortgage of the land then Another is the legal de facto, uh, the generation gap is actually giving that insecurity, then distance, as we have discussed, the distance uh, 
from unused the distance of our dweller from the unused land has giving uh, is giving the tenure insecurity and obviously the dispute. Uh, as concerned to the income generating activities, the agriculture is the most common activity, but it is not giving the uh, it, it is not a more remunerative. So the most of the households are engaged in daily wages more. So the highest here I found is more in daily wages than the agriculture and forest based activities. Livestock activity is actually safety nets for the households. And, uh, and this is what the uh, this is what the geography uh, the factors which influencing the uh, activity choices and activity cluster choices where we found the geographical area and spatial factors has a positive uh, effect determining the daily wages uh, and income from other sources uh, for the livelihood generation tenancy plays a significant role tenancy area plays a significant role in all the activity clusters to determine the livelihood activities uh, where the human capital like age and uh, are also uh, determining factors for the livelihood the ultimate uh, then in terms of personal tenure security that's secured tenure position you to choose the livestock and forest bed activities and also the agricultural activities but where the households perceive the uh, have a insecure position in land, they choose more daily wages as an IGAS. So here I'm concluding that the land tenure security is one of the vital issue as uh, in evading the development measure, particularly in the tribal area that determine the livelihood activities and daily wages become the primary source of the income of the household in the tribal area of the Jayakan because of uh, obviously some uh, known factor like marginalization, marginalization of land holding, irrigation facility, and more importantly, perceiving tenure of insecurity of uh, catalyst the uh, feeling of uh, choosing the daily wages as a primary source of income. So this is what uh, my presentation is. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Asis. In fact, this is your doctoral work, so I know there is the difficulty to you know finish it in half an hour, or more or less than half an hour. Anyway, thank you very much for a wonderful presentation, uh, Dr. Asis. Uh, in fact, uh, it's my our opinion that if we can have discussion at the end of the session, that will be better. So. So we will you have to wait for a few minutes, uh, Mr. Asis. So now I invite um, Dr. Deepak Kumar from JNU for his presentation. Dr. Deepak Kumar, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Thank you, uh, Professor Bera. Thank you very much for inviting. And thank you everyone for coming. And uh, so I'll straight away, can you share the slide if you are having this PPT? Just a minute. I could not actually do it, but if you have, you can share us. No issue, actually. No, I am not able to share because my internet connection okay, is not. Okay, all right, all right. Just wait for a minute. I can do it. You can give it to anyone. Someone can share. Okay, no issue. Okay. Okay. Dr. Pedra Thagaru is not there right now, so otherwise you could say it. Yeah, you can give it to an uh, an just Anuj also, like uh, Aman also. Yes. You can give it to him; he might share it. Can you share, uh, Mr. You know, Deepak Kumar's presentation? I'm say I'm sending it to you. Huh? Okay, sir. I'll do so.
so uh, as far as uh, he is sharing so i'll mm-hmm. just tell a brief about this uh, paper this paper was basically conceived by dr behra and uh, the basic idea about this paper was that transformation of land is happening every month every year but how this transformation is happening and how it is different from different part of uh, the country in india this is this is important that means on macro scale what are the legislative changes policy level changes or certain changes which are happening due to climate change or weather pattern and the land is changing once the land is changing it is changing towards uh, non agricultural land uses and when it goes towards non agricultural land uses uh, it uh, transform the whole ecosystem especially it has an impact on environment also has an impact on agricultural livestock because you lose out the multi tree crops area and permanent pasture grazing land and also intensity of agriculture through fertilizer increases because you have limited resources and in the long run when your population is also growing it creates a challenge that how you can sustain those population in meager land which is available the cost of agriculture production is also rising so overall we conceived this idea together and we started developing this paper uh, that uh, the topic is exploring land dynamics in india transition evidences from 14 major states to x curve so what is the concept of x curve here and uh, so this paper will largely discuss that on uh, scale 1 it will elaborate that how the land is transforming and when uh, land is transforming we are trying to visualize it through x curve it is something x curve is something like uh, you are having a lens and through that specific lens it is helping you to understand the system like if you have a lens you can look at the microscopic level and if you have a lens which can look at far away you can look at the galaxies as well so this is a bit uh, way inward and outward looking uh, spectacle for the lens so now this uh, uh, this slide is already there so can you go in the next slide so uh, this is about the content so uh, firstly i'll briefly discuss about the introduction that how this conceptualizes as i have started discussing then next i'll discuss the theory of transition and x curve and uh, then we'll come up with land transition in indian context and then we'll discuss uh, briefly we'll discuss our data and results what we have done here and then we'll apply x curve on the land use transition in india and then we'll conclude a little bit about it all the way conclusion is not very specific here because this is a larger problem which india is facing as if ashish was also presenting uh, the first presenter was also giving uh, something about the land tenure system so you will understand that after this presentation everyone each one of you will be able to link or find something related to this presentation or maybe you can apply these theories or methods uh, in your real mock work so next uh, slide please so in terms of introduction if i start looking uh, agrarian society that was in harmony in india like there was one british a, british chemical engineer who was coming here on the behest of uh, british uh, royal society he was investigating something in 1893 and he said that uh, it is not uh, british science which can teach indian something it is uh, other way around that means you have to learn something from india because in terms of harmony with nature they are very good in terms of soil preposition they are good in terms of land management practices they are good how much land they have to cultivate how much land they have to give fellow they are very much clear about it so this was a fellow who uh, understood indian society so there is only one example but there are several other example where indian agrarian society was in harmony with nature and there is no doubt about it what started happening when industrial revolution happened new knowledge started coming in then advanced fertilizers came in mechanization came in and so as the zeal of colonial empower uh, came in and in order to extract maximum profits out of the land they started changing the patterns of land what was inherited inherited traditionally with the societies now it started changing with the 
advent of large science or you know large technological system coming here so that's why you uh, yeah, soon after the independence also that a plethora of technological domination with agriculture kept on continuing and then you have a phase of green revolution what happened so in the beginning of course you had this uh, uh, this challenge of food security and you had to adapt technologies uh, under certain purview but when these technologies pers uh, persisted for certain years of time they started changing the paradigm and what was the change in the paradigm uh, it was new uh, policy framework which was coming out of this globalization where every country started looking onto the markets so now agriculture production is just not related to your uh, food security but it is also related to what somebody in mexico is uh, growing will be hampering your crop, uh, crop production and it will also hamper your agricultural cycle and uh, apart from that vagaries of climate change and weather pattern that can create havoc so uh, now it started a vicious circle where you have your polluted landscape capital intensive farming came in anti farmers regime came in anti farmers regime i mean this globalized network where major country uh, countries and companies are controlling the commodity in terms of farmer section so they have uh, this uh, mediocre assessment where they have lesser control on their decisions and in fact they have been influenced again so uh, sometimes marxist economists they will say that this is a neo colonialism and what was happening in terms of neo colonialism it was hampering the land, land system then and this is not just uh, related to the, uh, related to the context of india but it can be generalized with global south and and in european context or uh, in in context of american farmers you have lots of subsidy also so uh, this thing again translates where farmers Uh, marginal small and marginal farmers in india are struggling so as the farmers in europe and uh, uh, and uh, other parts of america are struggling so then question comes in that this was again changing the pattern of land and the rise of specialized knowledge came in like you have now internet of things you have big data analytics artificial intelligence and drones now this is again going to change uh, the paradigm of land system so uh, the pertinent question comes here that we need to understand land system we need to understand it in detail not just in detail but also what kind of policy and regulatory framework and changes have hampered so the next slide please so here comes the theory of x curve now with theory of x curve uh, some uh, few people had drift in netherlands uh they are developing this particular theory in in context of technological changes and how technologies are changing and influencing various regions now green revolution itself was a technology it is not a specific technology but a mixture of several technologies which are subsuming the whole land systems in india not in india but also in other parts of the global south so what is like if you start looking at this graph where you have on the x axis you have the time frame on the y axis you have plethora of technologies which are embedded in the system with which we, which are influencing your system so if you have a new particular new technology suppose there is a tractor on the top uh, so uh, the kind of tractor which you uh, which you are enthusing uh, in your society which which might be less lesser in terms of y axis and slowly slowly after few years the tractor as a technology will start growing and once it will start growing it will gain the momentum and it will uh, subsume the whole system and it will change the uh, the traditional ways of farming which people were doing uh, now you subsume different technologies different related technologies with respect to agriculture and they will start changing now if if you could if we can also adapt uh, land system here so what we are trying to do here like in 1950s uh, can you go to next slide now so now this whole system how between pre green revolution technologies and green revolution technologies and phase of liberalization we have divided this land transition specific scenario in india into three phases 
Now, under every phase, like in 1950s, you look in three three green revolution scenario, the government of India, especially the central government, started transforming the land tenure system. Our Ashish was giving some basic idea about it. So now, what happens when you change the land tenure system? You get entitlement. You get your uh, you control on your land. So all this zamindari system and bhudan movement happened in India. So during that phase. people started getting land and when they started getting land they were able to take decision but so as when they got the land they were not having sufficient means to an end to produce to expand the food production that's why in 1970s we had this green revolution technologies and uh, they they started influencing the land the whole land system so it got dependent you have uh, you you india was building lots of dams it was building fertilizer plant it was also building a thermal power plant through which electricity came and lots of water was pumped out of the ground system and so the problem in next generation started here so this green revolution which is green in this chart uh, is the main contentious uh, area where the problem uh, once all this started you uh, we also had this challenge of uh, uh developing uh, liberalization the phase of liberalization and once we have this phase of liberalization uh so you know the uh power of uh, land use or uh, the power of uh, non agricultural land use that means in terms of revenue generation was higher so people started selling land or people started diverting their land so this has a motivational factor that and now agriculture is no more profitable so you can sell your land or you can convert a land for something else so so you know this had this uh, idea that you might say that nobody would have started it nobody would have thought that this will happen one day but situation went in such a such a manner that people uh, started getting disassociated with agriculture so they have a term like depecentization now uh, farmers are not interested in being a peasant on the land so they they leave the farming sometimes they leave their land fallow or sometimes they'll uh, they'll give it as a share cropping to someone else so these things started coming into indian agriculture and uh, it was the result uh, not solely as a result of green revolution but also what is happening on the global scale now the farmers in us or or in australia or in ukraine they are growing lots of wheat so that wheat is influencing the prices in the global market and so as the indian farmers apart from fulfilling their uh, domestic demand about uh, wheat they cannot export it at a very remunerative prices because prices are different determined someone else as i told in the beginning so that's why uh, uh, now the condition comes in that you we need to understand that what happened with the indian land which states are doing uh, fairly better or which states are lo losing or which states might be losing in near future so the next slide will tell you that uh, next slide so this is uh, the whole data and results which we have uh, uh, got here so in terms of uh, production and uh, capacity of production the net so sown area and total cropped area are very important figures but so as the non agricultural land use uh, that that demonstrates that how challenging the situation might be in terms of uh, diversion of the land so you uh, we have not done this assessment for the northeastern region because we are not having sufficient data and also because of uh, tribal uh, culture there so some figures were not available and especially in the case of jammu and kashmir where land reforms were successfully better uh, we don't have the data and also the reporting pattern in in terms of state of himachal pradesh were different so that's why we left uh, these shaded areas under analysis but we have analyzed the rest of the country the it covers almost 80% to 85% of land mass of india so rest of the area is uh, been covered here so what you see this is challenging is in terms of non agricultural land use is expanding this yellow dot yellow uh, stripes you find all across india yellow stripes are 
rising and this is a cause of worry but yellow stripes are riding rising on what cause it is also rising on the cost of multi tree tree and grove area permanent pasture and grazing land so wh- what is the problem in india these days you find lots of uh, uh, animals like livestock animals which are which have been abandoned which are non milching anymore and uh, so you don't have uh, sufficient grazing land for them and so as the demand for fodder and also production of milk might suffer in near future because these lands have been finished and also this uh, these uh, animals which are roaming uh, uh, can create problem in terms of uh, the vegetation and green cover they can eat it up and uh, so this growth is again facing a problem so in the next slide we'll see that how this transition is happening next slide please so applying x curve on india's land use trans- transition and if you see this time interval against every decadal time interval we have found it and in terms of agricultural land and non agricultural land use we have plotted this graph and you can clearly see that uh, uh, this trend in agricultural land is declining although it cannot go to zero uh, that is our assumption is but uh, subsequently if it is losing out to a factor of uh, even 10 to 15% it can create lots of challenges in india and uh, that's why we we have to be careful about it and uh, in near future uh, what is our assessment that more land will be diverted and the quality of land which is available for agriculture might also suffer Uh, because because of uh, changes in the wetland area the kind of moisture area can uh, you know absorb so that's why uh, this paper is in it, it is still in progress we are uh, still writing it and we came here to present this paper so that we can, we might get new insights from others uh, because it's always our baby is always looking uh, better and if we get some other uh, opinion it will be better so the uh-huh. last slide is about conclusion uh, and uh, land acquisition on presentation yeah there is one panel discuss okay so uh, the last uh, is the conclusion and in conclusion uh, we want to we have already established a theoretical x curve here with the land transition which has not been done any by anyone in india or uh in abroad it has been done uh, for outside india in terms of dutch people have done something but not exactly on land transition it is about systemic transition towards organic agriculture or something they have done but not exactly to the factor uh, productivity and how land is changing completely so similarly impact of state land and central level policy under every decadal growth has been elaborated here so this is again our contribution and in terms of methodological can, contribution we have uh, demonstrated that how we can establish an x curve x curve has a variety of other uh, applications also to access uh, environmental degradation and also the impact on mtcg multiple t crops and grove area permanent pasture and grove Yeah, grazing land wetlands so uh, our in near future we uh, through this presentation we are also trying to convince uh, lots of collaborators uh, so that uh, we can develop more new research ideas and expand this whole theory of x curve into variety of areas and uh, so that's all from our presentation and i'll be uh, ready to answer your questions or uh, any other clarification and last slide uh, this is my mail id you can be in touch and let's uh, work for a better better environment in coming future thank you very much thank you dr deepak kumar it was a fantastic you know presentation and your fantastic work right you covered a very vital issue that dynamics of land use pattern using x curve Uh, i believe uh, there will be number of queries on this issues and our discussions but we'll discuss in the latter part of the presentation after all the speakers okay. deliver their speech we'll we'll discuss it okay thank, thank you very you. much thank you very much uh, now i will invite another you know fantastic speaker mr dheeraj kumar thakur he is basically an officer of uh, jharkhand administrative service He has uh, mostly dealt with, you know, land tenure issues and land governance issues in Jharkhand, 
and also presented by, I think, uh, his uh, papers or he had delivered lectures in Lal Bahadur Sastri Academy, Masuri also. So I invite you, uh, you know, Dr. Dheeraj Kumar Thakur. Can you please present yourself? Sir, uh, please make me co-host for the uh, yeah, Smart been, you, are, you have been made co-host. I think Dr. Peter Atya Gyan Pats already. Peter, Dr. Pedro Garu, are you there? So if you can say it, then we can, someone else can say it. You know, Ashish can say it at least. Just a minute. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Dr. Garu. And uh, Mr. Dhiraj Kumar, you can start. We'll make you host in between, okay? Nothing is audible, uh, Dr. Uh, Haricharan. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Pedro Garu, can you make him host, please? Uh, Dhiraj Kumar Thakur too, there is one uh, this one, another uh, link, if you can make him post, so he can share his presentation. Can you hear us? There is some problem. Anyway, uh, Mr. Dheeraj Kumar, you just start. I'll, I'll speak with him over phone, okay? Oh, okay, sir. Good evening, all of you present, sir. Today, it's a great opportunity for me and a special thanks to Dr. Vera, sir. My topic in this evening is existing practices of land survey and recording systems in the state of Jharkhand and public land management issues. Uh, we will discuss in uh, on this particular themes on uh, 12 different dimensions from evolutions of land to its various inherent problems, prospects and solutions. Uh, please uh, make me co share sir, so that I can uh, present my I have uh, I to make him, you know, to make you the post please. Just wait for a minute. Yeah, yeah, I made. Okay, all right. Yes, Mr. Dheeraj, yes, you sir. can, you are made co-host now. Can you, can you share your presentation now? Just, uh, just few moments, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Sure. You just double click to enter full screen mode, it shows if you do it. Okay. God. Yeah. 
no mr dinesh kumar it's not visible sure no we can't see your present ppt ppt one uh, it's a uh... visible nahi hai sir Okay, you can you can start uh, you know uh, speaking. I am no, sending you PPT, sir. Please. Uh, we will say it. Okay, no issue. You just start. You know you can because PPT is with you. We can start with you know. Uh, we will discuss on the theme on twelve different dimensions, sir. Uh, firstly, uh, what is land? simply the solid part of the surface on earth uh, not sea is land but it's not so simple for human race since immemorial antiquity land is closely associated with the civilizations sentiments of the people created empire and divided the country provided the base for subsistence and strengthen our livelihood it has long history from uh vedic period to present land reforms era gradual changes in land tenure systems from maurya to satvahana to gupta to mughal to british am i audible yes yes the importance of land can easily be traced into the great epic of ramayana and mahabharata too uh, in amarkos one can easily find about the types of lands there are 12 types of land briefly described in it which are even in use today's land revenue administrations uh, our topic is land surveying and recording practices how land surveys have evolved it's a, a very human race settled down near fertile places and gradually they understood the value of land especially land administrations and its various dimensions the science of surveying has has been developing since the very initial stage of human civilization according to the requirement the art of surveying and preparation of maps has been practiced from the ancient time there is a reference to map and diagrams even from the day of mahabharata sirka Kautilya's Arthashastra shows the use of map to show the extent of Mauryan Empire as well as on in warfare. In Indian context, Sher Shah Suri's and Todarmal's contributions is of great importance in land surveying, provided the base to the British. British land revenue and surveying systems. it's actually the beginning of surveying era with the inauguration of the journey of british rule in india in the aftermath of the battle of palasi that is 1757 marked the era of surveying in india field survey methods evolved as a precursor to the scientific map making surveys during the british expansions was reflective of colonial ambitions in india that is conquest and expansion of administrations and extortions to serve the interest of the imperial power the british ambitions of colonial expansion was expressed in three steps the first was defining the territory followed by fixing the boundaries and then making the inventory of land and people within the delimited boundaries 
Sir, can you share the PPT? No, we have already the said uh, the PPT is, uh, Mr. Dhiras, you can use it. You, okay. Can you see it? I have sent you, sir. No, already said. Uh, we we okay. were able to see it. If you can see it, you can uh, ask assist. You can operate. Okay, sir. Are you able to see it? No, sir. So already said. I don't know what happened. Uh, we have already said the early mapping efforts under the British imperialism included the Bengal Atlas and the map of Hindustan by Sir James Rennell. The Surveyor General of then Bengal, popularly known as the Father of Indian Survey, Reynolds also gathered information from the Aine Akbari by Abul Fazal. Uh, now we will uh, discuss about types of surveys conducted by British. Uh, the surveys introduced during this period are topographical survey. Mysore was the main centers and the model for the further survey based on scientific survey. No, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, can you see the presentation now, Mr. Asis? I'm not uh, seeing my PPT, sir. Mr. Asis? Sorry, just a minute. I'm very sorry for the disturbance. Dr. Pedra Thayagaru, if you could uh, say otherwise. I mean, I have already said with Mr. Uh, Asin, if you can I'm say doing, it. Sir. I'm doing, sir. Oh, please share it, yeah? Sure. Oh. It's loading. Yes. So now you can see? Mm. Mr. Diraz, you can see it, no? Sir. You can see it now, right? I don't know which uh, this one uh, you, ID you were using, but it's already said. If you can see, uh, yes, sir. Okay, okay, then you can. Yeah, sorry. Then a military survey. Madras was the center, and the Madras military institutions had played great role in conducting military survey, and ultimately linked with the pygmatical surveys, the technical uh, survey. Uh, named Great Technological Surveys. It was based on the line of latitude using technological methods, calculations based on central or green which meridian. The Great Survey was conducted William Lambton. The prime universe of the Great Technological Survey had a special theodolite, a survey instruments with, the, uh, with a rotating uh, telescope for measurement horizontal and vertical angles shipped to India from Britain. And a very interesting point is that at one point of time, ship that carried this great theodolite was actually captured by the French, who graciously repacked it and sent back to the British. And another one is a revenue survey of uh, uh, British. We will discuss it on uh, later on. Overall, at that time, it's very surprising, but true that cartography in 19th century in India was actually the most advanced in the world. Other nations, such as Britain, were not mapped to the extent that India was. Survey were not only scientific, but efforts were made to make them as intensive as possible. And now we will discuss The revenue survey and settlement systems by the British. The British decided to introduce a permanent settlement. The decisions made in 1793 to form a permanent assessment of all the times to come. Survey were also associated with the types of land, revenue systems prevailing at that time, which are as under. We uh, uh, know that uh, permanent settlement 1793 uh, and Rajatwari settlement and Mahalwari settlements. Uh, overall, the 19% of the area uh, included Bengal, Bihar, and Orissa were covered under permanent settlements. 
and 52% area, especially Madras uh, presidency and Bombay presidencies, uh, regulatory settlements were uh, there, and 29% uh, area, specifically the Ganga valleys and the northwestern provinces, Punjab, and the central part of India in 1822, Mahalwari systems were in use. And the revenue systems were uh, differ from uh, area to areas of these permanent uh, or Mahalwari or uh, Raitwari systems. Uh, more specifically, with reference to Jharkhand, earlier in Bihar, uh, four or five types of surveys have been conducted. The very first survey, which we know that Thakbast survey between 1840 and 1850s, this survey was completed, and this was the first done according to uh, outline of the land. No measurement was done, and the map was made without scale and basically drawn by eye. Not any clearly defined principles came through these investigations, from which detailed information about the villages could be given to the general public. But significance is that only one number was given in each moja which was now called Thana number. Second one is revenue survey. This was not according to outline of land. Scales four inch is equal to one miles. were uh, in used, temple, mosque, main, main part of the cities were included in this survey, revenue surveys. This survey was usually fairly accurate in level opening countries, but boundary comparison between different villages were not always correctly done in hilly areas like Ranchi, Hazaribagh, Palamu, Manbhum, and Singhu. The map were not generally accurate. Another surveys which are basically uh, in use in present Jharkhand is cadastral survey. Cadastral surveys is done on traverse seat on a scale of 16 inch is equal to one miles. The theodolite uh, traverse, prismatic compass, plane tables, seizure from Jarib instruments, which were uh, used in Mughal period too, were in used in that wars. In Jharkhand, cadastral surveys and settlement started during 1920, uh, 1902 to 1928, and in different districts in different uh, periods. Uh, more specifically, these are termed as uh, 1932 Khatians, which is um, not, uh, which is very much in use in uh, present Jharkhand uh, political scenario. Uh, another one is uh, revisional surveys. Uh, this survey is not in addition, uh, not any uh, new, uh, not uh, has taken any new dimensions, but uh, this is just a revisional of the cadastral. And uh, either the old traverse plot are used or the old cadastral maps are being used. The Mauzas boundaries and Thana numbers, that is uh, from uh, Thakbas surveys, were the same. The very basic principles of surveys uh, uh, were followed. Uh, that is uh, economy and consistency of accuracy, working from whole to part, and uh, independent checks provisions were followed. Uh, but uh, surprisingly, this revisional survey is not yet concluded in several parts of the Jharkhands. Uh, after discussing this, uh, we must... Uh, next slide, sir. Need of the surveys. While collecting the rent, it was not known that on which land the rent was collected and whose rent was not received and where was the land. Before uh, the survey settlement of the land had to be done every year, the Rayat who tilted the land did not make the land fertile by spending money because they were afraid that in the next settlement, the land might go into the possessions of another rayat, so that due to the increase in the yield of the land, his rent might increase. 
In view of this, it became necessary to make a permanent settlement. Hence, survey settlement was done at the time. British in African colony generally had not disturbed the tribal areas. They did not enter the tribal rituals and tribal entered in tribal areas. While in Jharkhand, while in Jharkhand, they entered in Damine, Damine Co. Uh, that is the present day Santhal Pragnaj region. And after entering in Santhal Pragnaj regions, Santhal Vidro, uh, prominently known as Santhal Vidro, after uh, entering in Santhal uh, at that time, Damine Co, land revenue settlements were made. The very basic and the first surveys that time was conducted by the Woods, known as Woods Dispatch, uh, known as the Woods uh, Survey Settlements. And in uh, uh, at that time, the Santhal Parganaj regions were divided into uh, lands were divided into two groups, that is Dhani and Bari. And uh, after Woods, McPherson's surveys is very prominent in that area and all the revenue officers or uh, revenue uh, managers uh, deals with McPherson's and Ganger surveys. McPherson's was the person who outlined the uh, survey rules, make surveys rules, Karunagos rules, makes uh, Khanapure rules and very uh, basic rules which are now, uh, even now used. And another one is Ganger surveys and uh, uh, this is the extension of McPherson surveys, and uh, uh, which uh, in Santhal Pargana we uh, specifically knows that there is Basauri tendencies. Basauri tendency is only one uh, tendencies which are being uh, sold or purchased, and no other land in Santhal Pargana except Basauri is which is uh, not uh, which is uh, only Senebuls. Uh, except Basauris, no one can uh, sell or purchase the other lands. And now we have to deal with uh, uh, other uh, aspects of the land, that is record of rights and recording practices in Jharkhand. The record of rights, and specifically known as the Khatiyan. Khatiyan is the basic uh, documents which all Jharkhandis or Jharkhand uh, uh, Jharkhand related peoples knows that uh, no wants that his name to be included in Khatiyans. Uh, that is specifically 1932 Khatiyans. Uh, the first objective of preparation of ROR is to provide all those who are interested in land, including government, with an authoritative statement the extent of legal conditions of the, in, their interest. Simply, ROR or record of rights is a record of title as well as uh, possession rights. ROR provides base for various certificates or identities, rather uh, certificates or identities like caste certificate, income certificate, or residential certificate. One need to consult with the ROR or the Khatiyans. The other main objects that are, uh, uh, are to put an end to an uncertainty of individual rights which promote disputes to protect the rights, to improve local knowledge, and to provide officers of the government with statistics and rules and data of efficient uh, for efficient administrations. In Jharkhand, both in Chhota Nagpur and Chantal Pargana, special attention was paid to the protection of rights of the aboriginal tribes and also the determinations of fair rents against undue high assessment by the landlords at that time. Prior to the state reorganization in 1956, the regions under the Bengal, Bihar, and Orishas were administered under special laws in force in different regions. The non regulations provenances in this area, known as scheduled area, were administered by the specific laws made for their purposes. The state of Bihar. Now, uh, Jharkhand, Bihar was the origin of the Jharkhands and separated in 2000, was uh, still governed by the three tenancies laws, Bihar Tenancy Act, 1850-1885. Sir, next slide. 
the Chotana Ku Tenancy Act, 908, and Santal Pargana Tenancy Supplementary Provision Act, 1949. The record of rights is prepared under two different laws in Jharkhand. Uh, the 18 districts, except Santal Pargana, are governed by the Chotanaku Tenancy Act, which has detailed provision of survey and settlements and another uh, travel protections, uh, land uh, sales and purchase rules are being uh, provisioned in this Sotanaku Tenancy Act 1908. And the remaining six districts of Santhal Parganas, that is Dumka, Devgar, Sahabganj, Godda, Pakur, and Jamtara, records of rights is not made under the provision of Santhal Pargana Tenancy Supplementary Provision Act 1949. This is very misconceptions uh, among uh, several officers that uh, survey and settlements are being uh, done under this uh, SPT Act. But not uh, under SPT Act, but under the Santhal Pargana Settlement Regulations of uh, 1872, which has detailed provisions of uh, survey and settlements. Uh, in uh, these rules, uh, very specific terms of the survey and settlement like Khanapuri, Kistwar, uh, it is his mentions, which is very beautifully articulated in uh, Santhal Pargana Settlement Regulations uh, 1872. Uh, one must have to consult and read uh, at the time. This is very beautiful, uh, beautifully written in. Move slide nine, sir. Now, after going through this uh, CNT and SPT Act, we have to. Uh, deal, uh, we have to talk uh, about uh, two different uh, items which uh, uh, Jharkhand, uh, the, in Jharkhand, the, the best practices have been met. Uh, tribal land and the best practices in Jharkhand regions and uh, government land, that is uh, state lands and best practices which are uh, being uh, used at present. Tribal land, the best practices of Jharkhand regions. Large tract of land in Jharkhand is classified as tribal land. Two acts, CNT and SPTs, regulate the affairs related with these tribal lands. Sir, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. These laws have a strict procedures that uh, practically prohibit transfer of tribal lands to the people of non-tribal communities, uh, basically known as uh, CNT lands. CNT is not land, uh, CNT is act. Under section 46 of the CNT Act, uh, uh, put restrictions on transfer of scheduled tribes, backward classes, and scheduled caste lands. Basically, scheduled tribes are provisioned to transfer their land within their communities. ST can transfer their land to the STs within the same police station's uh, limits. While backward classes and the scheduled caste tribes, uh, scheduled caste uh, uh, persons may transfer their land within the district boundaries. But unfortunately, after formations, uh, after uh, 1908, uh, after uh, um, CNT, uh, after enactment of CNT Act, several uh, police stations and several districts have been met. This is the very um, controversial uh, situation in Jharkhand. But now, uh, by following the strict rules, uh, these uh, transfer of uh, ST backward classes and SC lands has been managed very beautifully by the present and uh, for uh, governments. And uh, very beautifully, in Jharkhand, deputy commissioners has been given uh, the very vast power to deal with such uh, tribal lands and uh, scheduled caste and backward classes lands. Uh, deputy commissioners shall be necessarily a party in all suits of the civil natures related to any holdings or portions thereof in which one of the parties of the suit is a member of scheduled tribes and other party is not a member of scheduled tribes. The deputy commissioner must, uh, 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 must uh, involve in that case and will take care of that uh, scheduled tribes uh, communities. Now we discuss about the state lands and the best practices in Jharkhand regions. Uh, all state lands and each and every details of the state lands 
have been included in ROR in that very. Sir, next slide. Yes. Okay. Okay. On that very village uh, ROR itself, or the village Khatyan. In Khatyan, uh, besides Rayati lands, all government lands, whether it is Garmajarwa Arm land, Garmajarwa Khas land, Kaisere Hind land, or another types of government lands, whether it's a forest uh, or the department lands, it has been mentioned in Khatyan or the or ROR. Garmajarwa Arm. Garmajarwa arm means uncultivable and arm denotes common. Garmajarwa arm therefore would mean land which cannot be cultivated and is for the common use. Uh, 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 roads, talabs, bochar, rivers generally comes under Garmajarwa arm lands. Uh, these lands uh, are uh, protected and under the control of the communities. However, in reality, much of this land has been encroached upon by the influential persons. So the entries in land records may not reflect the actual status of possession. In actual sense, there is a land in land bank maintained by the government. We will discuss it later. But in reality, these are not under the possession of the government. We will discuss these under the uh, uh, principles of mirror, curtain, and cattle incidence principles uh, later on. Now we will uh, focus upon Gair Majarua Khas land. Here too, Gair Majarua denotes land which cannot be cultivated and Khas signify, signifies a possession of the proprietors. In earlier time, that very possession was under Jamindars or the landlords. And landlords at the time of vesting Jamindari systems, they settled legally or illegally to other persons the very same lands, which are still in government records. They are Garmanirwa Khas of the government land. But in actual sense, they are the land which are in the possession of the persons who were settled by the then Jamindars or the landlords at that time. This is very... Um, uh, Chaotic situations present in Jharkhand, but uh, after uh, uh, land bank creations, we will let her discuss on. Kasare Hind land, another type of government land which is very prominent in Jharkhand. Kasare Hind land is the land which were basically used by the British for their own use. Uh, may it be for military purposes, may it for their establishments for housing purposes, etc. And at present time, these lands are either being used by central government in uh, as in railways or the bus stands or etc or being used by the state government and before uh, 10 to 15 years there were very controversy that who will be the owner or who will control the land either central government or a state government but uh, uh, very uh, good steps has been taken and uh, decided uh, by government circulars that under the land and those land which are in uh, used by the state government will be under the control of the state government and will transfer state government to central government or central government to state governments. It's a very um, good uh, decisions has been taken and one type another type of uh, state land is Khas Mahal land which is allotted to needy persons on the land. Actual owner is government and settle land for uh, 20 years or 30 years and they pay rent to the government. Uh, basically in urban areas, these cast mahal lands are in uh, still used and is very controversial. Government of Jharkhand uh, has uh, created a land bank on online portals, we can see it in jharbhumi.gov.in. Uh, jharbhumi.nic.in. One can easily assess it on uh, government portals. Under, said, under Digital India Land Record Modernization Program, Department of Revenue, Registrations and Land, Reco land Reforms, 
government of jharkhand has maintained district wise data of gm arm gm khas forest land under different areas from uh, uh, called in here called a chuck one acre to 50 acres chuck and 51 acre to 100 acre chucks 101 to 150 acre chucks and so on uh, this is very beautifully protected uh, government lands but uh, surprisingly land is still encroached uh, uh, we have faced uh, this situation in uh, Giridi ISI lands, uh, where Dr. Behra was uh, there and I was there at the time, uh, circle officers of uh, Giridi circles. And uh, administration has to face uh, several adverse uh, challenges. Uh, this is because the land titling system is not so good as should be. Uh, now we will see uh, towards presumptive to conclusive land titlings, this is the solutions. Uh, in PPT, we can say that poor man's land in rich man's hands. Where is our plot? In one uh, films, uh, this is very beautifully shown. Where is my plot? And even Charminars was up for grabs. Uh, what ails our systems? This is because no title records, revenue records are presumptive only. Deed registration systems registry doesn't convey the titles. Multiple handling agencies, there is lack of coordination between registration department and mutation department and uh, between uh, rural and urban bodies. This is very pathetic uh, situations. Old and outdated, incomplete, inaccurate, Cadastral records, both in uh, graphical and context, uh, textual format, uh, and uh, non updating data are uh, these are the problems. We can see next slide, sir. These are the problems and reasons of the problems double registrations, protection of government land unique identification of parcels, no secure title, sale of assigned lands, it is easy. And where we are, we are facing insecure title, which leads loss of GDPs. Title and boundary disputes, these are the costly litigations. Tarif for tarif, tarif for tarif. And single task, multiple process, land records in pathetic conditions, resurvey or the divisional surveys has been concluded, not yet been concluded after completing 25 or 30 years. The records are, the records are not representing the ground realities. Difficult accessibility to public and interested group, land administrations and management driven by lowest level of the functionaries with unlimited discretions. These are the very uh, worst situations which we are facing. Now, what is the solutions? Next slide, sir. Digital India Land Record Modernization Program is the landmark for India is to transit from system of presumptive title to conclusive land titles based on the three principles of tolerance systems. That is mirror principles, curtain principles, the land, land title insurance principles. The mirror principles, according to this, at any point, next slide, sir. According to this, at any point of time, the land records must reflect the ground reality. Next slide, sir. The curtain principles. This states that entries in the land records must reveal conclusive ownership and inquiry into the past transactions or records should be unnecessary. And the curtain principles. This states that entries in the land records must reveal conclusive ownership and inquiry into the past transactions or records should be unnecessary. Title insurance principles. This states that the title is guaranteed for its correctnesses and if any loss is suffered by the party due to inaccurate 
records the states is in the burden is bound to compensate is bound to compensate for the losses this is from presumptive to conclusive titles the government will bound to compensate for the losses mr deiraj i'm sorry to interfere if you could conclude in 2 uh, 3 minutes uh, then we'll have scope for uh, the presentation sure now we will discuss uh, uh, future prospects of the land surveying by using modern surveying techniques just we are uh, i will make uh, it conclude within 2 or 3 minutes sir uh, we have already discussed about uh, digital land india modernization programs and uh, now it's uh, central sector schemes uh, since uh, 2016 with 100% funding from the centers and in digital india land record modernization programs four or five items has been included which will certainly prove the landmark for the indian uh, land revenues and the tenure systems these are the integrated land information systems these are the land record modernization program systems which will improve the real time information on the land assist in policy and planning making reduce land disputes and which will also link with the aadhar and will provide online single window at a glance to assess all available data regarding lands another one is unique land parcel identification number ul pin these are the pins is of 14 digit alpha numeric unique id for each land parcels and will equipped with the electronic commerce code management associations standards and open geo spatial consortium standards and another one is national generic document registration systems ngdrs which will uh, integrate the registry with the circle officers and with the sdos and the uh, district officers which will ease in registering and the land titling systems and linkage of e court with the land record this is another landmark will prove another landmark for the land issues just court will see whose land in whose name at what time and after this is deciding in over titles the land particulars will be handed over to these land records and transliteration of the land records in scheduled languages in jharkhand it is seen that ror or the khatiyans is written on several uh, languages like where uh, in gredi kaithi or in uh, languages at the time but uh, uh, with the help of cdac now government of india and uh, jharkhand government too initiated to translate the record of rights available in local languages any of the 12 languages uh, recognized by the constitutions another one is swamitva scheme that is survey of villages mapping with the improvised technology in village areas uh, in jharkhand government also decided to operate this swamitva scheme and in on pilot basis on 26th uh, june 21 government has decided to implement this swamitva scheme on a red basis in quoted uh, districts due to some uh, reasons this has been postponed and will certainly by use of advanced technologies this swamitva scheme will prove a very landmark for jharkhand too and overall the new systems will provide benefits modernize management of land records it will minimize the scope of land disputes enhance transparency in the land records maintenance systems and uh, facilitate moving towards guaranteed conclusive title for immovable property in the countries ultimately if the above schemes will be implemented in the same spirit which they are certainly it provide ease of living and ease of doing businesses which will ultimately contribute to the nation's gdp or national income 
and after discussing about the facts, we see a better future ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deeraj Kumar. It was a brilliant piece of presentation again. Now sure. I think Thanks. we have the last presentation, last but one, I think. Uh, you know, uh, Professor Isura sir is there, uh, Dr. Pedro Thagaru? Yes, yes, he's there. So we'll be happy to invite him uh, for his, uh, you know, brilliant lecture again. Professor Isuraya Garu has decades of experience in uh, land policy and governance issues. He's a professor of political science from University of Hyderabad. So listen, listen, let, let us listen to him. Professor Isuraya Garu, sir. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I was not there listening to the first two presentations. Actually, my area is politics of land reforms. Rather than, you know, expertise in land tenures, history of land tenures, particularly land tenures under the British, British ruled states, and the you know native states. So in fact, you know, I don't have good knowledge of the different different tenures. But in fact, you know, I was very much impressed by the just you know the presentation just uh, uh, made by uh, one friend you know just now. <clears throat> now my focus is on how after the first general elections in India, the Congress party wanted to fulfill its promises of land reforms, among which the most important is abolition of Zamindari and Jagirdari <clears throat> land tenures, land ownership. So, in fact, true to its promise, it <clears throat> guided, directed all the state governments to enact the abolition of Jamindari and Jagadari system. So I think all of us know that this was done with a good spirit in almost all the states. And I am very much, you know, say, uh, <clears throat> uh, very well known the way the Hyderabad State Congress, you know, enacted the abolition of, you know, uh, Jagirdari system. And at the same time, uh, uh, after immediately after that, in fact, the Hyderabad government, Congress government, enacted. Andhra Pradesh Telangana Area Tenancy and Agricultural Lands Act, 1950. Actually, this was occasion. This was uh, <clears throat> preceded by, you know, uh, this, this act is very progressive, in fact. Because before this, what happened in Hyderabad is in Telangana Arms struggle, in which land was taken over, land was occupied by the you know uh, land uh, particularly the tenants and the landless and then of course it's a different thing how the land uh, the telangana armed struggle was armed struggle of the peasants was uh, stopped and uh, this thing so to prevent any such recurrence of you know this uh, <clears throat> uh, struggles or you know pro uh, I mean, uh, <clears throat> uh, to occupy the lands and then uh, take to take into arms, you know, the Congress government made a very progressive, you know, Tenancy Reforms Act. It's one of the best, you know, see records, one of the best provisions of this act was to give ownership to the peasants who cultivated land for 10 years continuously. And of course, records of the tenancies would also be maintained properly. 
So, in fact, such tenants who cultivated the land for 12 years would be given for land ownership, their patadar. So, that means, you no, know, they already started land distribution in the form of tenancy reforms, that is, securing land, uh, giving ownership to the tenants. In fact, we're more genuine to compare to, you know, giving land to the landless. Okay, I'm just, I've just given an example. So, like that, abolition of Jamindari was done and tenancy reforms were taken up by enactment in different states. And then land was distributed, I mean, in a different way to the, you know, uh, tenants. I mean, but by, you know, uh, giving patas pata to the tenants. Then my uh, next this thing, you know, point which I would like to mention is the implementation of ceiling, uh, uh, land, uh, <clears throat> land distribution by enactment of ceiling laws. I mean, next wave rather. In fact, I should have mentioned that, you know, the Congress, uh, Congress party appointed a, an agrarian farms committee under the leadership, under the chairmanship of P.S. Appu. His P.S. Appu's committee recommended, in fact, you know, four important, you know, uh, reforms for abolition of Jagirdari and Jamindari, and then enactment of tenancy reforms, and then, in fact, you know, enactment of, you know, ceiling laws by fixing ceiling on the ownership of land by anybody. And the next two major these things was consolidation, enactment of consolidation laws, consolidation of land holdings, in fact. And then the last one was cooperativization of agriculture, that is, uh, I mean, putting land together and then, you know, cooperative, cooperativization in the sense, cultivation and many other operations will be cooperativized. <laughs> now, so let me go back to the ceiling glass. As we know, ceiling glass somewhat, you know, came a bit late. And then they were implemented in different states at different times. And then message came to all the people, particularly the landowners, landlords, that, you know, uh, in their land, uh, in their ownership, actually some ceiling will be put, and then more than above the ceiling, land will be taken because the landowner himself has to declare what is the land that is above the ceiling, and that land has to be given to the governments, I mean the state governments, and some state governments. So, on the whole, of course, ceiling laws were also enacted and were also implemented. Of course, not there was no uniformity, of course, because the you no know, central agency fixed the land uniform this uh, uniform uh, amount of land should be there oh, no it was not done like that therefore in fact ceiling the how much land should be owned was also varying from state to state <clears throat> but the point is expecting apprehending that they would lose the land in the ceiling, many landowners, in fact, wanted to, you know, uh, avoid a, uh, taking over of the lands. Therefore, they, uh, because of the time gap, time gap become be, uh, between the announcement of the land policies and the enactment, I mean, land policies, enactment, and then implementation. So there will be so much of gap. So between these, you know, many landowners, in fact, took advantage of these gaps and they divided the land among the, uh, I mean, kit and kin. In fact, some people went for divorce also. So landowner, see, land they, in a family would be divided between wife and husband. And then some landowners, in fact, you know, uh, registered the land, transferred the land and got registered land registered in Benamis also. So that's why land ceiling laws and the distribution of land, uh, land under the land ceiling was not so successful because in fact the Congress government also was not so strict 
as number one, the most important is that land records was not so good. And then <clears throat> the, the st different state governments were not so serious about, you know, uh, not having, not giving any gap and then uh, doing things very quickly and then so on and so forth. But there is an exception in the case of, in fact, in the case of the uh, states ruled by the left party, particularly Kerala and West Bengal. I think that also very, uh, I mean, known to many, many of us, those who are experts in land reforms and land uh, these things, tenures. As we know, the left governments, of course, they did, left government did not have their own program of land reforms. In fact, they took the Congress land reforms program as, you know, framed by P.S. Apusiti very seriously and strictly. In fact, they continue to implement the land, uh, tenancy reforms also, which included you know, a lot of distribution to land to tenants. See, in fact, we were talking about the, the earlier friend was talking about the land tenures, I mean, records, land records. As we know, tenancy is generally not recorded because the owner would, uh, uh, was, is a friend of transferring, you know, land to the tenants. But in West Bengal, for example, as you might have, you know, read or come to know, that, you know, they maintain records, they created records, you know, going to the fields and then inquire, conducting a survey, who cultivated the land as tenant for, you know, some time. So they would go and inquire and create land records. And then those land, uh, the uh, land, uh, the tenants would be, you know, given all the benefits which any landowner can get from loans from the banks, subsidies, and so on and so forth. So that is, and for the program is known as Operation Barga. So that is, and also in the same manner, they were very serious, I mean, in West Bengal particularly, very serious about implementing sealing law, uh, I mean, uh, sealing laws, enactment of sealing laws, and distributing the land to the landless. And uh, in the same manner, in Kerala, tenancy reforms were implemented. So they were known as, you know, kudikira pokars, you know, tenants. In fact, uh, those who cultivated the land were as tenants under a, on any land. They were also given pata, pata this thing, as is as was done under uh, you know the tenancy Telangana Tenancy Act. 1950. So, but at the same time, we should that uh, we should uh, understand that in Telangana, as the time passed, the progressiveness, progressive content of the tenancy reforms was not implemented over a period of time. Whereas in states like Kerala, in fact, it was you know done very seriously. And then uh, uh, the United uh, the, uh, United Front, particularly the Congress Party government, also when it came to power, took even tenancy reforms seriously. And then in Kerala also, land ceiling law was implemented and then enacted and then implemented thoroughly. So the same thing happened to a great extent in Tripura where, you know, left front government is dominant, has been dominant. So this is the record or history of, you know, programs, implement programs, uh, which were recommended by the PSO up to Congress Reforms Committee. And then the remaining two important programs, the consolidation of land holdings, and then, uh, I mean, uh, the cooperative of agriculture impact were just kept in pending. And then only in some states, say for example, land ceiling was, has been implemented in states like Haryana, and they each have given good benefits. But we have to understand why, what are the reasons for not uh, implementing the con uh, consolidation of land holding, I mean, enacting a consolidation of land holding acts, and then cooperative creation of agriculture also. See, <clears throat> why they were kept in pending, maybe Congress party, how, you know, it went, went about, you know, did not take 
these seriously because land ceiling uh, consolidation plan deal is a very good step in fact and it's also uh, i mean not a forceful and progressive step uh, in the sense that consolidation of land holdings would not involve taking away the land from the land owner it's only enables the land owners small owners middle land owners to put their land to uh, transfers to uh, i mean uh, take up transfers from one owner to the other so that instead of having five to six holdings in fact uh, the whole land will be four lakh four acres or five acres but the if because of the, the pieces would exist at different places in the village in and out of the village that is in fact this problem was there even when you know dr ambedkar you know considered this question and then he was very much you know uh, uh, worried as to how this you know small holdings would in fact you know would help the owners because the land the bigger the holding bigger the holding in fact it is more comfortable more beneficial uh, uh, in terms of returns and others to the owner so land that has been shown by the states which have in fact uh, taken up the consolidation of holding and then in fact <clears throat> the next this thing is you know cooperative variation of agriculture this is in fact somewhat you know forgotten rather because as we know even at the time of this globalization labor uh, uh, privatization and under this thing you know uh, liberalization this thing in fact the then government under the leadership of narsimha rao and then uh, this thing and also the uh, help and assistance given by jairam rabeek this thing they took up some reforms in the area of industry and other services related services but then they, they did not consider the question of land ownership like in consolidation of land holdings and then you know cooperative variation of agriculture in fact they undermined it they amend undermined the record uh, undermined agriculture altogether which because of which in fact you know people are facing problems now sometimes co corporative corporative this thing you know uh, owners of the corporate companies are coming forward to you know take over the lands under uh, on con and contract basis and so on and so forth so that the land owners small owners this thing you know would not face the uh, the problems of you know loss of you know crops and you know loss of plants when you know different you know calamities and disaster take place they are in 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 fact one way under the corporatization system the corporate ensures income to the land owners at least for some time to their contract period in fact one alternative to good um, to this land piece, uh, piece uh, this thing you know so many holdings this thing you know would be not corporatization but you know cooperativeization in fact many people during the uh, i mean uh, the protest and struggle against the three agrarian bills in the north particularly haryana uttar pradesh and other uh, nearby places for nine months in fact nobody including the congress party in the Com communist party also showed the alternative the alternative of the ruling party that bjp was say for example to enable uh, to um, give some uh, benefits of making the land uh, the peasants themselves owners entrepreneurs and so on and so forth that was their alternative that was their you know solution but good better solution would have been in fact consolidation of land holding and then co cooperative variation of land owners so much so that the corporates would not enter uh, this thing and also the the land owners small big and medium land owners would benefit from co consolidation and land uh, cooperative variation now i think you know i i understand that many of us know the benefits of consolidation of land holdings and at the same cooperative variation agriculture i would like to take some more time 
on discussing possibilities of implementing these consolidation of land holdings, particularly in the in the context present context. For example, consolidation of land holdings involves lot of uh, I mean expenditure, lot of mobilization, lot of campaign to uh, to make the owners agree. And I think you know they would agree in the sense that as a as a as an today, in fact, a landowner having on the whole six acres, five acres of land, having the land holdings in maybe sometimes six places, six you know sites. So if convinced, I think they will understand that they would instead of six land holdings and six, six at six places, they would have holdings only in two places, three places. So that the concerned, the other landowners would give the land, they take the land at the place where it's convenient, where his bank, uh, where his land holding would in increase. So, and then productivity and care and management will, will become easier for the landowners. In fact, as we know, the land holdings and then this thing in other countries like America are thousands of acres, you know, and you know, they are able to use the mechanization and then so on and so forth. And then landowners are somewhat comfortable and they are getting a good returns and so on and so forth. So here also, I think the management and uh, you know, uh, mechanization and so on, so on and so forth would be easy to use in the operation, the cultivation operations. And then expenditure wise, we have to consider. So expenditure wise in fact, you know, it's big, no doubt it's big, a, a big expenditure. Number one, I would suggest the present program of 100 days minimum, uh, under minimum 100 days work in a year could be in fact diverted, could be made use of by taking up, you know, digging or contour bounding and whatever that is required for this thing, you know, consolidation of land holding. That, that's one, you know, in fact, because anyway, the government has decided, has to give 100 days work to the people, you know, in the village or in and around the village. So the, in fact, what is happening to the, this work, this thing, you know, they, 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 they are repeating some work and then paying, you know, uh, uh, paying remuneration to the uh, laborers concerned for the fixing, for the fixed 100 days. So there is a reputation and there are also misuse and abuse also. In fact, if planned the 100 days work for the landowner, uh, the laborers in the in a village, in fact, could be diverted for taking up consolidation of land holdings, which in fact requires a lot of contour funding, rebounding, and so on and so forth. And then, in fact, we have to continue or expand the scope of liberalization, globalization, then this thing so that agriculture would also be included in our liberalization, privatization, and globalization program. See, for growth and development, in fact, you know, it should take place in the field of agriculture also. And then, in fact, globalization, privatization is good enough in the areas of industry. For example, you take the field of pharmacy and medical field. So many private factories have come and then they are in fact in doing a big, you know, service in the production and service. So there is nothing wrong. In fact, it is beneficial for the government to in fact privatize the medical uh, companies and then uh, pharmacy factories or it doesn't matter because, because of the lot of competition. In fact, they, they will be cost effective and then, you know, government can manage them uh, by the uh, increasing the cost and so on and so forth. In the same way, we have, we have seen how, in fact, privatization of telecom sector, in fact, has helped us in growth and at the same time, 
making cell phones and are the same very cost effective so much so that we are getting you know phones and other things at very reduced cost if they were to be under the government only you would have got a normal cell phone for 30 not less than 30 or 40000 rupees so what i am saying is privatization and the state getting back and withdrawing in some sector is good enough but in the areas where the state has not taken up programs like consolidation of land holdings and then cooperative land holdings in fact it should go uh, it should go forward it should come forward it has because it has not contributed to these these things and it cannot be taken up by any private people even if it is privatized there is nothing wrong in state coming forward in the in the in the in, in the times of you know privatization see no nobody no policy including the uh, policy uh, at the world level that is the state should take up certain programs in in certain pro, certain areas it should with the ground but it also said that in certain areas it should come forward it should go forward it should uh, and then spend time and then intervene and then manage programs like consolidation of land holdings and corporate valuation so another thing i would recommend you know to some extent ultimately the land owners small owners having their pieces of land at uh, six seven places is this thing you know they would also benefit in the in terms that you know they will benefit in terms of uh, having less time to manage more comfortable management and then particularly protection protection of the crops and other thing if they are at a place for example if six acres a one owner land owner a 10 acres of another land owner they are having the same site in fact you know protection of the crops and other thing will be very good in fact very comfortable and very effective very less expensive also so these are the benefits which the land owners get therefore another source of you know income i mean revenue or expenditure that would can also be uh, got by in fact asking the land owners having their pieces of land at different places to contribute to the expenditure or overall, overall expenditure of the on on the uh, consolidation of land holdings and then uh, cooperative valuation as i told you in the consolidation of land holdings people the land owners all types of land owners who are having you know their holdings at different places scattered this thing will not object because there no in no way their lands are taken over by the government for distribution to others therefore on the whole they are not apprehensive they are not worried about losing lands they are in fact they are going to gain so <clears throat> that is you know whether it is we successful or not is the question i think i have addressed i have also given the more solutions about cooperative valuation this thing also cooperative valuation is helpful i mean whether it should be forcible made compulsory because cooperation means you know one is not producing land but one is say for example getting share his share and his share in a cooperative valuation you know holding big or small big, say maybe thousands uh, of you know one big uh, holding will be this cooperative will be in thousands in that thousands if the land owner would be having his own share but the same identity which jitato is having that is this is this land is mine this holding is mine will not be there so that requires some what you know campaign and convincing and then there can be two two steps or two categories say for example first of all the government offers the program to those who would like those who have liked it and then voluntarily come into the program of cooperative valuation number i am sorry to intervene i mean would be request you to stay back for a few minutes because we are already running ahead of time in 15 minutes or so sorry can you sir just make it in uh, 3 to 4 minutes 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Week. Because you know, after all, see, uh, only in fact there was uh, uh, other uh, matter also which I did not, which I included, which in I. The discussion session, sir, we'll have. Uh, I mean, you can also speak uh, in the day. We'll have question and uh, during the discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. So, thank you, thank you very much. So, corporate variation. If one thinks the parties or party the government thinks that you know it is uh, it is uh, uh, may not be accepted by the landowners, it can be made voluntary to some people, and then those who are willing to get corporate wages, I think you know will be you know uh, come under the program, and then those who do not want maybe take time to be convinced about. The benefits of corporate variation because instead of <clears throat> uh, co corporate variation, in fact, you know what will happen is you know corporate variation will take over because the cultivation of land which is in small this thing you know is not so cost effective and then it also sometimes you know in the cases of disasters and you know losses you know many people are committing uh, suicides. For example, in our in our uh, state, for example, there are cases wherein even people having 10 to 12 acres of land committed suicides because the management is individualized. It is, and then whenever there is some problem, dies this thing, you know, the people they resort to you know suicides. I think this is, I think, and I will give the essence or gist of what I would like to say. I think you know I will I welcome. In fact, you know, they, if there are some gaps, say for example, particularly, uh, you may be knowing the consolidation land holding other states. For example, I mentioned only Haryana, and then I, I would like to know, and then other programs like corporate variation also, you know, it has taken place. For example, I would like to know. So thank you. I welcome. You know, any questions or? Thank you, thank you, Professor Sir. Yeah. I, in fact, I myself, you know, I'm work sorry to on... the team because we are just, you know, 15 minutes. I know now we have uh, another speaker. We can uh, yes. uh, Mr. Ananda Gandhi. Uh, uh, good, good evening, all uh, my friends and colleagues. Uh, today, uh, it is a good discussion on. Uh, uh, land uh, land acquisition and uh, the procedures and pros and cons. So are you able to listen? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Are, uh, yeah. See, I have been working this land acquisition system last to 27 years. I can tell about the the act, the Land Acquisition Act 1894, which is made by the Britishers, and we follow the act. And uh, there are some uh, false. Their miscommunications of the 1894 Act, and they have made into the uh, new Act, that is 2013 Act, the right to fair compensation, transparency, land acquisition, rehabilitation, and resettlement. This 2013 Act. See what I have. The, there are so your panel discussion and you are presenting. The first person that uh, one Sinha is presented. I was there, and second paper only half seen half. And uh, this uh, professor, uh, I don't know his name because just I uh, lately joined. And moreover, see, in Indian situation, in Indian context, the landowners, if you pay proper compensation, the landowner ready to spare their land to the any infrastructure development. See, as for my knowledge, the land acquisition procedures, they are there are misconceptions. See, for example, if you save survey number, see, I'm talking about the road, road projects. In the same survey number, they have been purchased in direct purchase, they have negotiated with the farmer and uh, got the two kuntas, three kuntas, four kuntas in some one rate. And the after one, one and a half years after, they, they purchased a, through land acquisition system, that is the plus identification, then notification, giant measurement, then 15 notification, 19 notification, then our notice. Due to the some reasons, 
due to the some reasons the land owner unable to submit their documents but the, the but the documents are available with the revenue department though but if when he he will not, he is not able to submit his documents and they are going for the submission of the his report his amount and court deposit these are the two very difficult situations in indian scenario the land owners have not been proper uh, properly paid their compensation what they need See, for example a person has having a two acres of land for the infrastructure development his land is mean almost one and a half acre has been lost he once he be lost the, the the other half acre either left side or right side but they are not, not taking but as for land acquisition procedure and methods if he has lost in a piece of land left over that has to be acquired he has to pay the compensation full compensation with the multiple multiple factors for example the right in the multiple factors state to state it is different then he will be treated as a one time financial assistance in addition to the land acquisition and the rehabilitation cost this has not been done properly one way the other way with the uh, the, the locals or sometimes they appoint for ngos to acquire the land to provide the proper compensation due to this reason the land owners they are not allowing the the during the construction time or during the replacement or during the time they are not allowing to the uh, to construct their land and uh, they are even ready to die also they are ready to suicide also because these are the, the, the various multiple factors here affecting the land owners being not paid proper compensation but uh, after seeing all this this paper presentations and all title and non title person non title for example uh, some non titles the land is owning leading somebody he will get the land ownership but he the the tenants tenants of the land by doing then they are forgetting and they are not uh, properly making their enumerations and uh, even they don't they don't follow the cut off date what is the cut off date generally cut off the date is a date of survey or date of notification these things uh, it is not following uh, wherever there is land um, uh, amount paid but not acquired and these are the legal and uh, many problems which is arising for indian scenario for infrastructure development of various projects so is that uh, from uh, you know is that all from you mr uh, ananda so we can have a, a, a you know question and our answer yeah. discussion mm. mr ananda uh. Oh, uh, any questions? By my side, no, no questions. This is only for my suggestion to get the land during the land acquisition. The procedure has to be followed properly to acquire the land. There are some cases, some cases the procedure has not been followed properly, and the compensation has not been paid for the land owners, which is rightfully he should get it. Thank you very much. Uh, we got your point. Uh, Nano, can can you spare you know ten to fifteen minutes for the discussion now, please? Um, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. So, okay. Yeah. If you have any 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 participant has any query to any participant, particularly any speaker, then we can have a discussion. We can you can put your question. No, the floor is open for discussion. Yeah. Any query from anyone or any speaker? Sir, uh, perhaps in uh, said uh, in first uh, first speaker uh, in CNT area there are sixteen districts, not uh, fourteen districts. Uh, sir, actually, I have not covered the Golani area. 
uh, for my study. So I keep this frozen area apart, uh, which is also under the CNT attack. Uh, that's what you are talking about. Not audible, sir. Presently, uh, 18 in CNT and 6 in SPT. Very good input uh, for uh, Dr. Asis Sina. So you can note it, uh, Dr. Asis. Yeah, I'll lose it. Any, any, any other query for any speaker? So if there is no query, then I have a small, you know, oh. just a small query. For I, I, must, I must congratulate uh, first that uh, Sinha. Uh -huh. He did a very, very, very good uh, job and he has uh, his PhD and all, it is very, very useful. If it be, I would suggest him to go for, go for publication for his thesis. He has uh, already published a couple of papers, so I am his uh, so being a supervisor. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, uh, sir. See, my question is to Dheeraj. Is that was the system of survey and settlement in the British ruled states and or whatever we call you know provinces more scientific than the way you know it was done in the native states like Hyderabad or you know so many so many 500 the native states were there what was the difference you know was, was it more effective say in British ruled states In British rural states uh, at that time, uh, the subordinates were very uh, disciplined. And uh, present day survey officers, including survey subordinates, staffs are not so disciplined. At that time, in British period, at that time, the staffs were all, all survey staffs were permanent in nature. But today, in survey offices, they all are of temporary or ad hoc nature's job. They are daily wage. Transferable, yeah. They are daily wage. And uh, in, uh, in, in, in a survey and settlement, they are called Ujrat Bhogis. Ujrat Bhogis Amins. They actually measure the lands in day-to-day -day basis. And they get the uh, perks as per the land uh, which he has done in uh, day basis while the permanent uh, staffs uh, do their jobs on job basis they completed the survey settlements within two or three years at that time and at present in revisional surveys uh, we are not in a position to conclude our uh, survey settlement uh, jobs even in 10 or 12 years this is the big differences in between as uh, time and this time just one more sir, there is a, I want to add, sir, Abhinandan Das, uh, 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 Harichandan, I just yes, want to sir, add uh, that, uh, sir. Uh, uh, the Dheeraj Kumar, sir, that sir. British Act is 1894, there are the loopholes and falses. Due to that falses to recovery, the new act has been made. For example, yes, you sir. are telling within two years, there is government employees, they made it. Are, no, no, they are, they are not no, no. I am, I am not they talking are, about land, no, no. land acquisition, sir. I am talking about land survey settlement, sir. Yeah, yes, yes. I am not talking about. Uh, I am not talking about the land um, acquisitions act. Yeah. I am talking survey about settlement. land survey. Land survey and records. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. So another, please uh, clarify. Land survey that. is different, and okay. land acquisitions is different thing. Sir. I have already uh, experience of la district land acquisitions officers. Okay, okay. So, so sorry, okay, uh, sir. Four See, or five sir. years in, uh, now the land, district land acquisitions. Land acquisition, this is survey and all, sir. Now it is digitized. Those days there is no digitized. It is only maps. See, with, with, only maps, but those maps are still in uh, use. We have, we have used those no, manual use. maps in. Our computerized maps. No, computer my see, there is a decimal, decimals, there is a variation, sir. But here in Divisage, you cannot uh, decimal variation also, you will get a prompt. And when sir, it is digitized, could, see, see, there is a lot of changes has been, and there are a lot of multiple folds, differences has been rectified, and that's why that new act has been made. 
new act that is have experience uh, sir, in in implementing in implementing modern techniques in one of our districts in khuti where swamitva scheme uh, has been implemented but uh, hmm. not so very uh, result is not so very um, sir, you are, positive you are, you are in which state sir you are I'm, in which I'm state i am from jharkhand sir Jharkhand, yeah. Uh, Jharkhand. Okay, sir. I have an right. experience of working with UP. Even Jhar Jharkhand also. I was one of the World Bank expert. Uh, Jharkhand Urja Sanchar Nigam Limited. Sure, I am sure, the sure. Uh, social R and R land acquisition expert. Jharkhand sure. Urja Sanchar Nigam Limited. See, see, in UP, the all maps have been digitized, and digitized training as given by them is a Bangalore, Karnataka. In in Karnataka, the the maps are not being digitized even still today. So one of the day, one of the land acquisition committee in meeting and all, I was telling, see, UP people have been trained by the Bangalore, but Karnataka people they could not get the digitized. See, there there may be the multiple multiple reasons, multiple reasons. And uh, but see, the states of Andhra has I'm, the I'm talking uh, about the seven years in, in, in using modern technologies in uh, surveying, sir. No, Andhra no, Pradesh no, is still in I, our I'm country. Also, sir, I am also from Andhra Pradesh. Till date in Andhra also, they are now doing for digitized. Earlier there sir, is no digitized maps in Andhra. Sir, no any districts of India has been fully digitized. But Andhra Pradesh is yeah. first among worst. <laughs> yes. okay. Bihar was one at time we used to to say Bihar is the backward. We are much backward than the Bihar now. No, Bihar, Bihar has um, um, uh, established their own laws. We are still in uh, survey and settlement old laws, but, but they all uh, revenue laws have been uh, fully written afresh in Bihar. Very yeah. nice. In fact, uh, we did a survey in Maharashtra that time. Sir, sorry, if just you know, short this thing, you know, uh, when the, uh, the British ruled states, the <clears throat> governments, did they bring the expertise and knowledge from the British or they, they used the expertise in survey settlement, other, you know, these things, you know, uh, from Indian, uh, this thing only? What is that? In my presentation, I have already told that at that time, Britishers uh, has done uh, very good jobs, especially in survey. The areas which were surveyed at that time were not surveyed in Britain. No, no. no kind, kindly, you know, I'm I see, uh, you did not get it. You know, at that time, at that time, in the British states, you know, surveys were conducted, this thing, by the British government. At the same time, contemporary this thing in the native states like Hyderabad or you know Pepsu or other. So what was their you know expertise? How what what uh, what was the difference between British uh, techniques followed with the British government and then governments in the native states, the Sanstanas, for example? Yeah, yes, sir. That's, then, the, that's the, has, the, the, has, uh, the settlement has made in India is the one rule. That time it is a one rule. Britishers studied very micro level at that time that surveying techniques which were already in use. They used especially Mughal yeah, periods, yeah. survey and settlement techniques, and and after some modifications as per requirement, they have uh, a far uh, they have uh, better than. Uh, they are earlier uh, the native states, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. That's right. Sir, sorry, I mean, Dira sir. Dira sir, George, sorry, I mean, to interfere. I mean, Surya sir is from political science. So, you know that the colonial system was very authoritative administrative systems where whatever they wanted, they could. But uh, yeah. today yeah. is a very flexible democracy yeah. where it's, land is a state subject. Since land is a state subject, uh, center cannot impose its uh, this one, you know, authoritative, authoritative rule. That is one of the reasons why we are not able to do. Another reason is that we have a lot of complex socio demographics that has changed over a period of times. You have huge population, huge land holdings, lot, millions of parcels, and there is topographic changes also. 
even yeah. if you have a finest methods, very you know, you know, advanced technology, but still the system and the people are complex. You know, socio cultural complexity is there. So you have to address these socio cultural complexities in order to you know make it very smooth and uh, measure it. In fact, we had done survey uh, of digitization of land record in Maharashtra and in West Bengal also in 2010 to 2013. We have seen that there is huge discrepancy in data with referring to with regard to you know digitization, computerization uh, of land records and so on among different states. You see that Andhra Pradesh has a different feature, and you go to Maharashtra, they have a different feature. In Bengal, they have a different systems. So there is no homogeneity in land record systems. There is no homogeneity in land record systems. There is huge heterogeneity in land record systems. There is a huge I mean, demographic changes. Socioeconomic complexities. These are some of the challenges. Anyway, thank you very much, Dira Sab. You please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, what is the uh, topmost uh, problem that uh, the Indian land systems, uh, tenure system, is facing now? And uh, what can be done? Who would like to answer? Dira Sab, you would like to answer? Sir, I will, I will answer. Yes. Sir. If you, if you rightfully, lawfully identify the land survey number by using either a manual method or a digital method, and the compensation to be paid equally the satisfaction of the land owner, that is the condition I am putting inverted commas, satisfaction of the land owner. See, once he will get a fully satisfaction of the land owner, the payment of the land, and any landowner is ready to ready to spare his land for any development. There are some cases, see, the landowner has not, not been paid the landowner's cost properly. That is one of the major hindrances to get the land suitable is land getting to the any infrastructure development in India, including either road infrastructure or any uh, displays, any factory, any. Like this, many places that the landowner is not satisfying means he is not getting proper compensation. You have to pay. For, that's why in the New York it is says that the multiple factors. See, for example, the the one kunta or one acre is ten lakhs. They are giving two times twenty lakhs, and solatium hundred percent that is for forty lakhs. Like this, the mechanism this the two thousand thirteen act has made to attract the landowner, he can uh, get the proper compensation and he can ready to spare his land for any infrastructure development. Sir, uh, basically the rate of the land is inflected. Market price of the land is different from the government uh, rate of lands. This is the very crux and core in the land acquisitions, which uh, for which uh, landowners uh, don't want to get their land uh, acquired to the government. Yeah, that's why now the and and in, 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 and in there, several black monies are involved. <laughs> I can't give it you. I have I land. land. Once you, you sell today is one lakh, or if you go for two, three years, it will be five, ten lakhs. So that I am, a, as a, being a social expert, I am the uh, supporter and duties to get the landowner proper compensation, suitable compensation. Then only the, the landowner is ready to spare his land for uh, any development. This discussion is very contentious for the last, I think, 20 to 30 years. The issue has been discussed uh, not only at the state level, but at the central levels. How we can address the issue of land record management. But uh, still, we are unable to answer. Right? There is no, not a single answer to uh, you know answer this query, big query. What is the problem? Is the reality the problem is that you know in uh, land record management, there is so comp so many complexities that you cannot handle it all alone at the only at the state level. There is equal intervention from the center is required. Another important is that, very important point can be noted is that, if we can hand it over to the panchayat, 
and panchayat takes it over for its governance of land and uh, we can would con could convince each land owner at the panchayat level and then bring it you know to the I mean, point to the land uh, record department maybe the tahsildar or the circle officer or whoever then probably you can do it but then it's not only that there are a number of issues which is also associated with uh, the legalities of these issues but there are court cases so, you know then, then say state or center cannot simply interfere in the matter there are millions of cases land related disputes in india already unless these issues are uh, disposed of i don't think the civil authority has the power to interfere in the legal matter so this is a judicial this becomes a judicial matter so in this judicial matter civil authority civil people don't have the authority to interfere i think dhiraj sir will uh, agree with me that there are millions yeah. of cases and if we go with our current legal systems it will take more than 100 years to dispose the cases mm -hmm. so more than 100 years more than 100 years so this is the complexities so now judiciary civil administration of the civil society ngos panchayat level if they come together and generate awareness among the publics and create a revolution then probably there something will be changed otherwise it will not so digital india land economy mission program Uh, may prove fruitful for the for your problems uh, to get solutions uh, hope in next year uh, ul pin that is unique land parcel identification numbers will be operated all over india that will uh, sure uh, prove very fruitful for the for uh, uh, limiting the land disputes okay And then very for land acquisition too since we are already 45 42 minutes late so should sure. i wind up now uh, dr pedrathe garu yeah uh, just... as you rightly told uh, to uh, the judiciary it's uh, in the domain of judiciary to address this issue land millions of uh, cases are pending so uh, you have suggested that uh, this ngos and uh, judiciary and uh, all these things should come together so what are the uh, anthropological way of uh, facilitating that kind of thing yes sir this is a very important valid question you know anthropologists has a lot has a lot to contribute here because land tenure is an institution in fact understanding land tenure as an institution is very important this land tenure institution is associated with not only the legal matters it's also associated with the socio cultural behaviors so many of the administrative matters they don't consider social and cultural aspects and institutional aspects of land tenure systems so in the, since land is a multi pronged approach land policy and issues we need to adopt multi pronged approaches here and the socio cultural approach institutional approach involvement of people that is participatory approach but then you know governance you know then democratic uh, governance like you know involvement of gram panchayats then of course you know what is that called uh, fast track court that is being now considered and what dhiraj sir said that ki we have already in introduced digital in india land record management systems this multi pronged approach can you know understand can address these issues but this requires holistic understanding through anthropologists anthropologists can contribute a lot particularly by doing ethnographic studies and participatory studies dr pedra tegaru sir thank you very much thank you that's a, that, that's really uh, insightful yeah uh, thank you all the panelists and uh, uh, it has generated a lot of interest and uh, the ours is a huge nation and uh, millions of uh, cases and uh, the uh, pending and uh, something should be done so Uh, that strategies to solve these issues uh, th those are the matters of concern uh, those are the issues uh, that this platform world applied anthropology platform is created uh, to address the contemporary issues and bringing the interdisciplinary and uh, particular anthropological insights and deeper understandings uh, of the local communities and uh, policy structure and uh, um, and all the possible um, uh, capital forms to uh, rapidly solve the issues and uh, provide the real time solutions 
So with that intention, this uh, platform is created. Thank you for bringing your wisdom and years of expertise and sharing your concerns and uh, so possible solutions. So the dialogue begins and we will continue in multiple doses uh, um, because uh, uh, Dr. Haricharan Behrasa rightly said that a multi-pronged approach is needed. So, uh, so all uh, teams should come together and think seriously uh, uh, and uh, take it uh, positively of what can be done. So in future, uh, we will again uh, continue this discussion. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, the, Dr. Haricharan, for convening this meaningful and productive panel discussion. Thank you very much. I just I wanted to invite Ajit Saab to give a vote of thank yous. He's our uh, you know, co-organizer. Professor Ajit Kumar, sir. No, you are not audible, sir. Please unmute. Please unmute, sir. Professor Ajit, sir, you just unmute yourself. Okay, right. Please, please. Professor, can you hear us? Now it's okay. Tell me, please. Can you tell again? I couldn't able to. So your voice is not audible, sir. What? No, we are requesting you to extend vote of thanks uh, to our, you know, esteemed speakers. Yes, speakers. Okay, okay. And giving closing remarks, if any. No. Uh, it was. Uh, is it okay now? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So um, I must thank the organizers and. Uh, Professor Gandikota, Professor Dhiraj Kumar, and Professor Hari, and uh, Professor Kode, and for this fruitful discussion, it was quite uh, nice to know and very informative. And uh, I thank all of you for this uh, attending this and organizing such a beautiful thing. Thank you all. Thank you all. We should oh, carry on our Thanks. discussion in the future. Thanks for this platform. Really, it is very fruitful discussion. It was very, very fruitful discussion. And in the current situation in India, it is required. Thanks. Because of we should, as an anthropological association for humankind, we are... Thank you. Oh, his internet got this. Oh, all of them. Thank you. Thanks, Parag. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, the organizer, also for give, uh, organizing such a wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. See you.